That's your sports roundup. Next up, it's Asia Life. Time now for Asia Live here on France Fan Cat. Today, we're heading to Bangkok, where we join our regional correspondent, Meha Sata. Thanks for joining us, uh, Meha. A lot of the uh, big news in the region currently coming out of uh, the Philippines. Well, what we're seeing in Mindanao is actually the latest stage in a decades-long conflict. Uh, this uh, remote southern archipelago is a predominantly Muslim area in a heavily Catholic country. And the people here, they felt like sec they're treated as second-class citizens. Uh, the result of this has been a bloody civil war that's been waged since the 60s. It's killed over 150,000 people. Um, and also, this area has become quite lawless. It's awash with guns and uh, various warlords. So it's a little bit hard to say who's exactly responsible for what here um, in this latest clash. The government has launched airstrikes uh, yesterday after eight days of clashes. Um, and it looks likely that we'll see an end to this one, uh, to this conflict in the next day or two, and it could be a very bloody end. Um, but uh, overall, the overall unrest in the area, that looks like it could very well be likely to continue. Okay, next up, we're going to head to Burma. Uh, when asked to name the country's capital, many people reply Rangoon. The city is the country's most populous, its main economic and historic center. Since 2005, the official title has gone to Naypyidaw, a planned city which has risen from the tropical forest. Its style is sometimes defined as defensive urbanism, resembling, as it does, a military fortress. France van Kat Cyril Payen went to visit. This is a national parliamentary session, Burmese style. These military officers are all participants in Burma's democratic transition. They may be MPs, but they were not elected. Everything is new here, including the close proximity of the regime's few vocal opponents. 25% of the House seats are reserved for the military, like this colonel, directly appointed by the armed forces commander-in-chief. Soldiers have a duty to respect the will of the people. We decided to work together with all parties to develop the country's religious and ethnic harmony. But what do you do if the uh, opposition takes power? Well, that remains to be seen. It's hard to say. But the opposition has just 43 out of the 664 seats in the parliament. Do you foresee that the, this parliament will be less green and more euro color in the next future? I don't think we should think of parliaments in terms of colors, but in terms of what it can do for the country. We are in Naypyidaw, literally the abode of the kings. The new capital and seat of parliament has no center. Instead, the 7,000 square kilometer city is divided into districts. One for the government ministries, one for hotels, and another just for military installations. Naypyidaw is a special fortified zone that falls directly under the president's authority. Built in the middle of the jungle a decade ago, under instruction from the former dictator. And uh, let's say that there is another you know, uprising in the country. If people demonstrate in Rangoon, that's the really matter. Because in Nipidor, they're safe. Not only above ground, but also underground. There are a lot of tunnels and bunkers and things underground in Nipidor, so they can move the whole administration. And that kind of turtle mentality is exactly the mentality of the Burmese military. But within Nipidor, we still find a more common Burmese reality. This woman is one of the hundreds of thousands who helped build the new capital. She lives with her family in a hut with no electricity or water. I've been here for five years now with my family. The brick houses are reserved for government employees. Night has fallen on Nepidor. Here, everything is carefully structured and planned to the smallest detail. The MPs are housed and grouped by political colour. The opposition and its modest 43 representatives occupy just one small street, for now. At first they thought that she was a, she is a spoiler. She came, we came to the parliament to disrupt the, uh, the, the system or something like that. But since the report was fair, she was regarded as a, something who could contribute for the future of the country. Indeed, time is a conduit for change here, particularly for compromise, after decades of bitter struggle and sacrifice. 
position. I'm now a member of the legislature. I was not before, and there are changes like that, of course, many external changes. Although promising, Burma's future remains uncertain. Many questions still hang over the country's military-led democratic transition, like whether it is truly irreversible. Sirila Payen and Isabel Wolf reporting there. For more, we can go back to Mayasata in uh, Bangkok. Burma has had a lot of plaudits uh, from Western leaders for its progress towards uh, democracy uh, in recent times. At the same time, from that report, it's pretty clear uh, just quite how much in power the military remain. Well, as you've said, Burma is being hailed widely for its reforms. Almost any media outlet, almost any news report you see will describe these reforms as sweeping. Now, you can't really deny that a lot of changes have happened. They have. But if you're in Naypyidaw, it becomes very, very clear that the military is still in power. And um, the military still holds, uh, according to the Constitution, the military is re has reserved 25% of all seats in parliament. The opposition NLD, led by Aung San Suu Kyi, they only have 43 seats out of 660. Um, so when you talk about changes being reversible or not, um, you, the military is very much in the driving seat. Mayor Sata in Bangkok, thanks very much for joining us. And that's it for this edition of Asia Live. Do stay with us here on Live from Paris, coming up all the, very shortly, all the very latest news, including, of course, from Washington, D.C., uh, in the wake of that shooting rampage. Stuart Norvell will be with you very soon.